Okay, welcome to the next video in the QNAP series. So this one we're going to be showing you how to go through and set up uh, your domain controller using your NAS device. So the first thing you want to do is log on to your QNAP system. So this applies to the TS range. Um, it also applies to other QNAP models, but we're specifically talking about the TS251 Plus here, or the 451 Plus is exactly the same on both of them. So what you want to do is you want to go to your control panel, and then you want to go to your domain controller system, and you want to tick the little box that says uh, enable domain controller. So. Um, what you want to do is you want to decide whether this is going to be the main domain controller if it's going to be an additional domain controller i.e um, you might have more than one domain controller in your domain or whether it's going to be a read-only domain controller however uh, for us um, it's the use case here is a, um, a windows flat network with no vlans um, it's a basic very basic network and this device is going to be used to replace a Windows server so we want to select the uh, domain controller and then the next thing you want to do is we want to ed enter the domain that we're going to be um, configuring so we'll do that now uh, we need to do We'll do you want to put the dot local at the end of it and then you want to create a domain administrator password make it strong and server signing uh, we're going to select mandatory if you click the little information bit here um, this would be for uh, give you some information so SMB signing is offered but not enforced clients can choose to use SMB signing or not mandatory SMB signing is required or disabled SMB signing is disabled for SMB 1 S for SMB 2 this option behaves the same as auto so we are going to be leaving it set to mandatory and then what you, what you want to do is once you've done that we want to click on apply so bear in mind that when the domain controller is enabled only the users can access the shared folders via um, Microsoft networking all NAS users will be denied so as an administrator you will still have access to everything so that's absolutely fine so we're going to say yes to that that will then create our domain controller system and we'll just wait for that to complete so once that's completed um, the next thing you want to do is you can go through and define your specific groups and your users um, for your domain and then you also want to tell your system um, that you want to back up the domain controller configuration uh, at least nightly uh, which is what we do um, and then we also back up the domain controller configuration off box as well so we use a remote off-site backup solution to back up the domain controller configuration for a belt and braces approach okay so once your domain controller has um, um, finished setting up you'll see the additional tabs up here of users groups computers DNS backup and restore so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to DNS and we can see here that it's created our DNS settings um, so what we're going to do is once we've installed this we are going to be telling our system our router that uh, on the DHCP leases that it hands out we're going to tell it to use the domain controller um, DNS system 
computers these will be added um, as and when computers join the domain um, now this section here the groups this is where you can create your additional groups um, that you want to give specific um, access to various files and folders that you might create so for instance a, a classic example of this is you might have a finance folder on your shared drive that you only want finance users to access um, if you've got more than one user you would create a finance group um, you would pop your users into that group and then on the shared folders you would specify that only the group finance is allowed to access that folder and um, subfolders and files. So let's go ahead and create a user. So as you can see here we've got our administrator for administrating the uh, domain and a guest which is the built-in account for guest access to the uh, domain um, of which we are never going to be using that we're not going to allow any guest access for that um, and we can tell our system to uh, ignore any guest access to any files and folders in our shared folders so let's go ahead and create a user so we're going to call this test user and we're going to give it an uppercase like that I'm just going to write this down so test Okay, so we're giving it a description. Um, you can also add the uh, user's email account if you want to in here. And if you want them to be in charge of their own emails um, or passwords, I should say, then you can do that here. You can tell your system that um, the user needs to change their password the first time they log on to the domain. And if you want the account to expire, then you can also set that here. So we're gonna leave that at the moment. Okay, so what group do we want to add them to? It should create a domain users group somewhere. Yep, so there we go, it's created a domain users group and that is the only group that we need to add people to and that happens automatically so we don't need to do anything there. Um, if you obviously wanted that user in a specific group then you would have you would have created that group before you've created the user and then you can tell the system here um, which group you want that user to be added to you can have users in multiple groups so you can have um, you can have a user in the domain users group and you can also have that user in the finance group um, so that you can give that user access to everything um, and then all you would do on the actual shared folder um, you would deny um, access to domain users and allow only access for the finance group and then we can say save to that that's all there is to it so now you've created a test user if you had some shared folders um, I'm going to open up I don't know this one here and we haven't got any any data in any of these at the moment but um, if we wanted to give this user at the moment no one has access to any um, shared folders so we can click on add we want to select domain user from the list here and we can find our test user uh, we're going to give that test user read write access only and we're going to add that 
as you can see here, the uh, admin user is always um, always has access. And then we're going to say apply to that. So now um, the admin user and the local domain user test user has access to this shared data here, this shared folder here. So once you've built up your um, file structure, this is where you would come in to um, set the file permissions of which users can access certain systems or certain folders and files. The next thing that we want to do is we want to join the domain um, from a computer. I'm not going to do that today because um, I'm going to wait till I take this onto customer site to start building up the user groups and sorting out all the file shares. But I just wanted to show you how easy it is to create um, a domain controller on your NAS drive. Now, so let's take a look at the resource meter now. Um, resource meter hasn't really put a hit on it at all, so I'm going to click on that. We'll be able to see exactly how much additional space or how much additional load it's put on. So just creating the um, the domain controller has added about 200 meg onto the uh, memory. Obviously, once you've got more users logged on, um, if you've got more than about four or five users, then potentially you might want to increase your, mem uh, your memory again from four gig, maybe add, um, I don't know, eight, go to eight gig, something like that. But uh, in our instance, this is only going to be used for about five users, so four gigabytes of RAM is sufficient. So if you've got any questions, leave us a comment in the uh, or leave us a question in the comments below. Um, and if you need a hand setting anything up, then we'll be more than happy to help. Um, just uh, get in contact via the usual methods. Uh, apart from that, just like to say thanks for watching and I hope you found that video useful.